Welcome to the 2016 AP Statistics FRQ exam. In this video, we're going to focus on question number four from the exam, fully explain the answers. It's a really good one. At first glance, it's like one of those ones you read and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a tough probability one, but actually ends up being pretty simple if you just logically think through it. So before we move on, please don't forget to subscribe and like and hit that notification button as well for me. I really appreciate it. All right. Looking at the question, here it is. A company manufactures model rockets that require igniters to launch. Once an igniter is used to launch a rocket, the igniter cannot be used again. Sometimes the igniter fails to operate correctly and the rocket does not launch. The company estimates that the overall failure rate defined as the percent of all igniters that fail to operate correctly is 15%. Now, just reading that alone, it jumps out to me right away, binomial distribution. I'm thinking right away, 15% success. Well, success is what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a rocket to not launch, then that would be considered success. But, you know, 15% of rockets fail to ignite. 85% would therefore properly ignite. Now, remember, with binomial, you also need a sample size, like how many. And I haven't been given that yet, so this also could be geometric when you're just looking for your first success. But let's keep reading. But I love the fact that I'm given a proportion. It tells me that I already know the probability that a rocket will not ignite is 15%. A company engineer develops a new igniter, ooh, called the super igniter. Okay, so this is different than the original igniter. This is a new igniter. Now, the intent is to lower the failure rate. 15% of the time a rocket won't launch because of the igniter it sounds pretty high, to be quite honest. So they're hoping this new super igniter is better, meaning less likely to fail. So to test the performance of the super igniter, the engineer uses the following process. Step one, one super igniter is selected at random and used in a rocket. Okay, great. If the rocket launches, another super igniter is selected at random and used in a rocket. So they put an igniter in a rocket, launch it. If it launches, they put another rocket, another igniter in another rocket, launch it. They just keep repeating. Now, step two is repeated until the process stops. The process stops when a super igniter fails to operate correctly. So the moment one fails, done. Or 32 super igniters has successfully launched rockets, whichever comes first. So if I get 32 launched rockets in a row, I will stop and be like, holy cow, this is pretty good. Or the moment I get one that fails, I will end my trial. So assume that super igniter's failures are independent. That's super important because in the binomial or geometric model, if one rocket igniting or not igniting impacts the next, which impacts the next, then I run into compound probability and this is not going to be independent. That's going to be a major problem. Probably very difficult to do. So let's jump into the first of three very good questions. All right. If the failure rate of the new super igniter is 15%, just like the old one, what is the probability that the first 30 igniters selected using the testing process successfully launch rockets? Okay. I need the first 30 all 30 to all work. Now let's remember that 15% is the probability it fails. Now that's what I'm looking for. So sometimes we call what we're looking for a success, but that, that the rocket's failing, right? To make it simple. That means there's an 85% or 0.85% chance that the rocket is a success, meaning it, it does launch. And we want the first 30 to all launch. So this is actually really, really simple because there's only one way this can happen. Launch, 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 30 times in a row. So that would be 0.85 raised to the 30. I definitely don't want to write 0.85 30 times, but it would be 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85 repeated until we got 30 of them in a row. Now, why am I allowed to multiply them? And why, you know, because they're independent. Because I don't have to worry about, well, if the first one launches, does the second one go up? Does it go down now? Down? No, it said they were independent, which means it's 85% for the first, 85% for the second, and it stays 85%. So this is pretty simple, easy math to do. Don't be afraid to just grab a calculator if you need to. 0.85 raised to 30 is 0 0.00763. So pretty, pretty low chance here, 0.763%. So this would be extremely surprising, very unlikely to have the first 30 all in a row launch. 
All right, question B steps it up a little bit, but it's actually really easy if you just take your time. Given that the first 30 super igniters successfully launched. Okay, so I'm given that the first 30 launched. Now remember, his step process is that I'm going to keep going. Every time I launch, I just keep launching another one until all 32 launch. But I haven't reached 32 yet because it says 30 have launched. Now here comes the question. What is the probability that the first failure occurs on the 31st or 32nd super igniter? All right, let's focus on the 31st. Now, I can't change the fact that the first 30 have all launched because it said that that was a given. So what's the probability that the 31st rocket that I set up fails? Well, 0.15. That's it. Again, they're independent. So just because the 30 previous all launched doesn't make the 31st more or less likely to launch or not launch Again, they're independent. So the 31st rocket failing is 15%. Done. Easy. And you say, well, wait a minute. Don't I have to worry about the ones before it? No, because it was given that the ones before it all launched. So, I mean, they already launched. It's already happened. It's already taken place. I don't care about them. Or now we got to focus on the 32nd igniter to launch. Now, this is where we got to be a little bit careful. For the 32nd to be my first failure, which is 15%, that means the 31st must have launched 0.85. Now, let me backtrack here for a second, right? All we know is that the first 30 ignited. That's all we know for sure. So if I'm looking for the 32nd to be the first that fails, that means the 31st must have been successfully launched no problems, and then the 32nd. Now, remember, if the 31st rocket failed, I would stop. I would be done. I wouldn't even launch a 32nd rocket. So there's only one way this can happen. The first 30 have already all launched. The 31st launches, and then the 32nd, which is this one right here, this one is my failure. So here's the probability that the 31st rocket fails. If that happens, I'm done. Remember, his process is, was if you get a failing rocket, stop. And then here's the probability that it's the 32nd rocket. Again, 30 have already launched, 31st success, 32nd fail. That's it. I'm done. Literally, it's that easy. All I have to do is grab a calculator and put all this together. So multiply before addition. So 0 0.85 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.1275. Grab a calculator if you don't believe me. Then I can add those two together to get 0 0.2775. So given that the first 30 all launched successfully, the probability that my first failure is on the 31st or 32nd is going to be 0 0.2775. All right, now for the third and final question. Given that the first 30 superigniters successfully launched, is it reasonable to believe that the failure rate of the superigniters is less than 15%? So go back and take a look at the problem if you need to. The whole point was hoping that these new superigniters, there was an intent to lower the failure rate. 15% was the old igniter. This is the new superigniter. That for the whole, you know, for part A and part B, we were assuming was the same, 15%, 85%. But now we're saying, okay, if 30 launched all in a row successfully, would that be reasonable for us to now believe that the new rocket is less than 15%, the new super igniter? So here's what I did. I look back at my answer to part A. The probability that all 30 launch successfully is 0 0.00763. Now that is very, very low. If we're thinking about an inference test here and we're using an alpha of 1 or 5%, this would be significant. This is lower than either of those values. So therefore, it would be very significant. I would consider it a significant event if the first 30 were all successful. Again, the probability that the th first 30 is all, all successful is very unlikely. But if it did happen, if it was given that the first 30 were all successful, and the probability of that would be 0 0.00763, then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This happened, but the probability is like, it shouldn't have happened. That's where I'm finding something that would be considered significant, statistically significant. So that is what would tell me that, whoa, 
maybe these rockets, these new rocket launchers, these new igniters, the super igniters, really are less likely to fail. So, you know, think of this as a test, right? The null is that, nope, it's still 15%. The super igniter is not any better than the old one. And the alternative is that, no, it, it is less than 15%. So the way I tested this was I launched 30 in a row and they all successfully launched. The probability of that is 0 0.00763. If the null was still true, that is extremely unlikely. That, that would be like a miracle. And remember, in the world of statistics, we don't believe in miracles. So when something with a very, very low probability occurs, we want to say, why? Why did that occur? Well, you know what my best guess is? The proportion of times that a rocket's going to fail is less than 15%. This new super igniter is better than the old igniters that had a 15% rate. So again, hopefully that makes sense. Pretty simple explanation there once you understand it. It's this idea that something very, very significant actually occurred, which is what's telling me that something fishy is going on here. And the only thing that can be fishy is, well, I actually have a better super igniter and it's less than 15% failure rate. All right, hopefully that makes a lot of sense and you guys will ace a similar problem like this when you take your AP exam.